What's up and welcome back to another episode of Game Ball with your host, Matt Samantia. Today, joining the show, we have Clemson wide receiver commit, uh, Michael Mankaka. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. But uh, my first question I have for you to kind of start off is probably a big one. So your freshman year, you came to, a, a, I guess, a Clemson you know, football uh, camp. You know, I, I, feel like, I feel like I've read that all over the news about you. And, you know, you, you obviously did really well. But what was it like? you know, going to that camp and being able to line it up and have a good showing? I mean, freshman year, it was like, it was really eye-opening because I grew up, um, you know, I, I got introduced to football at a young age. Now, it, it was always my dream to, you know, go play D1 or go play big ball, you know, someday go to the league and um, going to the Clemson camp, that was my first, like, real, like, wow, you know, like, you get to experience, like, you see competition, that you might be going against uh, when you go there and you see how they carry out everything. And um, you also see the guys that they recruit and like you try and match yourself up, you know, compared to them. So it was a big, it was a big eye opener. It showed me where I needed to grow, showed me things that I was doing good at. Um, uh, but it really just kind of made me um, have a bigger drive, if that makes sense. And, yeah, definitely. Um, based my purpose in football more. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, something I also saw that you spoke about was when, when it was happening, they, I guess they split up the camp where it was like, you know, the D1 guys had all these, had all these offers and the rest of the bunch. And you kind of got grouped with all these guys that had tons of offers where there's players that had 10 offers already, whatever the case may be. But did that kind of like make you realize like, Hey, I, I can go D1. Like I am hanging with these guys. I'm, I'm division one football type. Yeah. So that actually didn't happen until, um, uh this year's camp oh, so okay. Well, okay. summer camp uh -huh. uh, but it was the same exact way you know freshman year like you were split up like you knew people at camp knew like who was potentially going to get offered who was getting looked at mm -hmm. who wasn't that but it wasn't a thing where it was like it was already set so if you're making plays like they would switch people in and out and so freshman year um I didn't you know get to go in that group but like not going in that group also made me like more hungry if that made sense like it it, it just it, it put that like drive in me to know that like I still gotta improve on this 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 um but this year when I went to the camp yeah it definitely like I don't know it because when I went there freshman year I didn't go to get and I didn't get to go in that recruiting group you know I didn't get to you know really show off what I could do in front of coaches but when I went back to camp this year and I got called up to that recruiting group that definitely like you said, that definitely, you know, put that like, hey, I can definitely hang with them. I can, I can, I can play around with them. Yeah, definitely. And so I guess this year, this summer, was this the one where, did it happen this camp when Coach Sweeney like kind of called you out in front of people and used you to like demonstrate like certain routes or something you were doing impressive? Um, yes, that did happen uh, a couple times, or I think it was, I think it was once or, or twice. It was a couple times during camp where, I was just doing the little things um, and he just happened to call me out um, and he just he said, hey, like, you know, run this route and you know, ran it well and, and it and definitely caught their eyes. So, you know, it was, I feel like that was some of that just like, you know, performing, getting to show what I can do um, in front of coaches um, and, you know, just just playing cool under pressure. So it was good. I had no idea you knew about that, though. That was surprising. Yeah, no, nah, I, I do my research, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, but uh, how, how did that kind of make you feel, though? I mean, that's Coach Sweeney, like one of the best coaches in college football, calls you out of camp to, to like, make you do, do this, show people how to run around and stuff. Like, how did that make you feel? It was very humbling. Like, it was, it was kind of surreal, if that makes sense, because I had never really talked to Coach Sweeney before that. I only really saw him on TV, and we – took a couple of pictures and talked a little bit um, the previous camp the day before, but there wasn't like an official, you know, like meeting, you know what I mean? So uh, it was very surreal. Like it, it, it motivated me and um, I kind of, I still kind of had that picture in my head until today. So it was a, it was a great moment and definitely something that I won't forget, but it also like, it also just showed me how coach is going to coach his receivers that go there as well. You know, he's not going to be afraid to call them out or tell them to do something in front of somebody if they're doing it right or wrong um, and show them how to do it right. So, 
definitely. You know, you, you mentioned the word surreal, and that that's a you know big word right there. When you uh, when you actually accepted your offer, I guess on a when you tweeted out that you're committed to Clemson, you know, you said it was a very it was very surreal that you'll have the opportunity to play there and be a part of one of the best programs uh, in the country. But when you got that offer, when you got that call to be, uh, you know, a PWO, like you have the opportunity to play or what was going through your mind? Like what was happening? It was weird, if that makes sense. Like, because I had just gotten off the phone with Harvard and, you know, they were looking at offering me. Um, they didn't outright say it. There's still some things that needed to be dealt with. Mm. They were going to come back to me, but um, I was also getting recruited by some other schools. So my recruitment was kind of like starting to boil down, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, schools were saying they were going to offer. They wanted uh, some more tape. Um, you know, they wanted to see how I do with competition down here. And so it was really um, like kind of like a crunch, if that makes sense. And so when coach called me, it was just like out of the blue five minutes after I got off the phone with Harvard and, He's like, hey, man, you know, he, obviously, you know, me and Coach Grissom have a good relationship. So, you know, he's asking how I was doing, how my day went, you know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and then it got to the point of the conversation. Where he was like, hey, man, you know, we'd like to offer you, you know, a PWO offer. And, uh, you know, we'd love to have you here and stuff like that. And, like, the moment he said that, like, I was kind of thinking, like, wow, like, hard work paid off. Obviously, like, the hard work isn't done yet. Mm -hmm. But, like, the part of the hard work that needed to be done in order to be re like recognized if that makes sense. And like my hard work be put into fruition so that I can be able to get offered that part of the journey was like, okay, like, you know, that paid off. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Um, so I was just really happy. You know, obviously I told them like, Hey, I'm definitely coming. Cause I was, I mean, Clemson, that's my dream school. And I was set on like, you know, the first school that really decides to pull the trigger on me. Um, I'm definitely going to, uh, take a long, hard, you know, like I, I'm, I was almost set on committing on basically anybody who was going to offer me. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, coach offered me and uh, they were the first school to do that. Um, and uh, it was to me, it was a no brainer. So mm -hmm. called my parents afterwards, called people who were close to me. And it was definitely it was definitely a, a good day. Yeah. So like when you you were saying as soon as you kind of got the offer, like you knew you're going to take it, like you knew that's where you wanted to be. Yeah. I mean, even if I would have delayed the process and picked up some offers from some other uh, power five schools or some full offers from other schools, I still felt like I would have committed because it was just growing up, like watching, you know, Sammy Watkins, DeAndre Hopkins, mm -hmm. um, T Higgins, all the Clemson guys, Hunter Renfro, Justin mm -hmm. Ross, like it was, it just, it just felt right. Like I couldn't really see myself at any other school. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you mentioned you had a good, you have a good relationship with Coach Grisham. I guess you stayed in contact a little bit beforehand. Uh, yes, but sir. how do you think that relationship that you built with them will help you be able to excel at the next level since you already have a going with the right wide receiver coach? I feel like it'll help a lot because sometimes players, feel like restricted in the way that they can have, whether it's a relationship or go to their coach about something. And me, I always like to, you know, get critiqued and, and find out where I need to grow and then fix that area so I can be better. And so if me and any coach or whoever I may need to get the help from, if we don't have a good relationship, I feel like that can hinder how we communicate, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you don't want something to, have any effect on how you want to you know perform or um, how you can go to a coach for something I just feel like it'll help make things you know more comfortable and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff so definitely you, know, you mentioned that uh, Clemson had a, a great atmosphere that really like stuck out to you what was that like if you had to describe that atmosphere like what was that like for you what is what is the atmosphere that Clemson has it's just very family atmosphere um, mm -hmm. everything is very real there um it was, it was a, you could tell it's faith-based too. Um, and everything that they had just, just wasn't forced. It was very real. You know, they didn't have to try and pitch anything and try and fake anything. It was just, it was just real from the, from the jump. And it was a family atmosphere and you just, you just felt uh, like you needed to be there. Mm -hmm, definitely. You know, you mentioned you had a couple 
other schools that were interested in you. Like, I think I've read that uh, Iowa was looking at you possibly, maybe Wyoming, obviously Harvard. Um, but being a PWO, like, was recruitment different for you being as like a PWO or was it like kind of the same as if you had like offers rolling in? That's actually a really good question. Um, I would say recruitment was faster, if that makes sense. Because all these other schools were, were looking at me for scholarships, of course. And, you know, they were looking at me for months. Um, you know, they're telling me to get to camp and then went to camp and it was great. And they're like, OK, you know, we have the plan to offer you, but, you know, we want to see, you know, some some film of senior year, first couple of games. But Clemson, it was they didn't know me beforehand. They didn't know who I was. They didn't really know about me. Went to camp, um, had a good couple of days at camp, um, made a good impression, and then they offered me off of camp. So mm. it's definitely faster than all my other recruitment or any other recruitment was. Um, but as far as like any different, wasn't any different. I wouldn't feel like it was any different. Did you did you go to camp with the intention of like possibly making a name for yourself and having Clemson look at you? Or just go to like become a better player. Like what was that process like for you? Oh. The club, well, see, freshman year, I went to definitely become a better player. Obviously, I wanted mm -hmm. to get looked at, but this year I, I came with intentions and I wanted definitely to to get looked at and uh, uh, to try and make a name for myself. So I knew it was the last camp that they were going to have before senior year, and so it was like, hey, you know, I got to gotta put everything mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. You had to put on a show. I mean, you did, yeah. obviously. But, uh, you know, in January – of this year, you, you, I think it's your, your visit to Clemson, you, you know, you took all the photos, you did all the media, like all that stuff with them. But what was like the visit like, you know, just, you know, get a full look at like the facilities and everything in person, and, you know, take like the, the signature photos and the Clemson gear. Yeah. The photo or the, the visit was amazing. You know, even like aside from all that, like, like the photos and the, and the, like the glamorous stuff, it was really cool, you know, just being there and seeing like how the coaches like, interacted with players and how they interacted like with you and stuff and how much they cared for like you um, and your whole family. Like it was definitely yeah. eye opening because <clears throat> I went there with my, my mom and my dad um, and they'd never been um, to an official visit. They'd been on some visits, but never to an official visit. So it was, it was amazing. You know, we got treated, they took care of everything, sm minor details, you know, down to the smallest things. And so it was really eye opening. And so, you know, going on the, visit having coaches talk to us put us in meetings and stuff uh, meet the players as well it was really cool so obviously you know icing on the cake was getting to suit up in the gear and take the pictures and look cool and stuff but everything was amazing man it was it was a great atmosphere um, and it was it just solidified like me and my dad um, and my parents were, were talking we're like yeah you know definitely feels like I made the right decision it clicked for you like you felt like that was the right spot for you yeah 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 for sure yeah, definitely. And, you know, with high school, um, you, you played in Minnesota for the majority of your career or high school career, three years. There, and then senior year, you went to Lawrence to play. But, uh, you know, you made you, you went from one team to another. But was that like a difficult transition? Like, what was that like? How to yeah, I know it's high school football. It's not like going from one college to another college where maybe it's more advanced, but you still have to pick up a new playbook, get associated with a new quarterback. Like, what was that all like for you? I mean, it was really I had a plan going into it and I didn't just want to be blindsided. Mm -hmm. So obviously when I went there, um, before I even got down there, you know, I started connecting with the players on social media and on Twitter. And I was like, hey, you know, as soon as I get down there, first thing that we need to do is start throwing, start building chemistry uh, because we can't, you know, go into this year slacking. And that was the first thing that me and my quarterback, um, James Rawl, he's a great guy. Um, that's something that we did. So the first day actually that um, I arrived, it was like the very night I'd done, I'd finished packing, I finished unpacking uh, and it was about an hour later and it was dark out, but I texted James and he was like, yeah, you know, we can throw. And then uh, my wide receiver uh, friend and teammate, Kaysen came along too. And so we threw. And so um, basically that's where I started. We, we throw pretty frequently building, just building chemistry. Not only that would help on the field, but on off the field as well, you know, hanging out with those guys um, who would accept me in, you know, as a, as a friend and a brother um, it definitely helped. Um, and then the playbook as well, 
Um, I just, like we're doing right now, I just got on the Zoom or Google Meet, um, FaceTimes with my coaches, and I was like, hey, coach, you know, we need to set up a plan so I can learn the playbook, offense and defense, because I don't want to be behind. And my defensive coach, you know, he was, he was, He's definitely for it, and my offensive coach was for it. And, you know, I just, just tried to work as hard as I could in every single area, whether it was in the weight room or it was in uh, on the field or it was – or I had to come to the playbook. Um, so I didn't want to have myself in a, in a deficit just because I didn't know what to do during the game. Well, that's a, that's a good trait to have, just kind of, you know, you want to be better, so you, you do all you can to be able yeah. to make it work. So that's, that's awesome to see happen. But you mentioned, you know, the defensive side and the offensive side. Yeah, I noticed that you played receiver and then you were a defensive back, obviously. You played corner slash safety a little bit. But how did um, how does playing defense, like, help you offensively? It helps so much because, like, you really learn how DBs, like, think, you know, mm. by being a DB, if that makes sense. Especially, you know, my defensive coach, he had coached at colleges, like big name colleges. And so he would tell us like the things that would need to happen in order, you know, like he, he just knew how to, to coach us, if that makes mm-hmm. sense in our specific position. And so playing defense helped a ton because like you do things as a wide receiver to set up a DB just so that they'll think that you're doing something else. But then when you play DB, you're like, oh, no, this is what would get me. Like, this is what would get – you know what I mean? So it helped in that area. Um, and it, it just it just helped be a smarter receiver, learning how DBs would play and, and DBs' instincts and maybe some of their tendencies. Um, and it also helped me watch film on DBs better because as I played DB more, I started watching film myself and I started getting coached up seriously at DB. And so then I'd watch film on other DBs and see where other DBs weaknesses were. And I'd try and um, tell coach about them and we'd try and attack it during games. So. Definitely. Definitely. Did you, um, you know, obviously you're going to be a receiver, but did you, did you enjoy being a defensive back? Yeah. DB is fun. Any position to me, any position is uh, real fun uh, with like, obviously ones that I can play like I'm not gonna be playing like center like left tackle or anything but like DB I specifically like corner a little bit more because you could be a little bit more chippy and get away with it but DB is definitely it's it's a great position um and you can you can really be a dog to at the position so you know I I love it um yeah really definitely I mean you know did you when did you start becoming like a or I guess playing both sides of the ball. Did you play your whole high school career? It was like the last season or what was what was that like? Yeah, so early in my high school career, I was strictly a wide receiver. Um and I, you know, I really like wide receiver. That's where that's where like I, I started. Well, I really started running back, but that's where I really started to shine at uh, was wide receiver. So I love wide receiver, but uh I came here and they had some team needs and they're like, hey, you know got a bunch of receivers but we don't have as many you know corners and stuff that are willing to play uh or maybe that can play and so I was like you know I'm team over me so I decided you know I'll just play both sides of the ball um which was something that was great for me because it would get my conditioning up in time and it'd get me more acclimated to the weather quick more quickly so I just felt like it was a great opportunity you know play DB um and, and I loved it so it was the last year I I had practice a little bit early on in my football career but um, it was mainly this last year where it was legitimately two-way player did um playing db help you with your, your footwork in any way oh yeah hips biggest thing was hips and feet like receiver for me i never really understood like when coach was like i've got to get your hips right got to get your feet right i was like mm-hmm. okay I'll, I'll do it but i don't really went to db and i was like oh, okay hips and feet are huge just getting out of break sinking your hips like not taking as many steps uh uh that may not be needed you know being clean out of breaks being efficient on where your body uh, movement is and how you lower your weight and stuff all that stuff like it it helps and it it definitely improved i felt like too yeah definitely well another underrated i don't know if it's underrated trait of yours but you're obviously pretty fast you're a pretty speedy receiver and yeah. uh, part of that, you also, you know, you ran track, you know, you told me to track me like early, earlier this week, but uh, you know, how did, how does running track help you with the football side of things? Running track 
is really so I now I'm doing the 110 hurdles. Um, I may be doing the four by four high jump, uh, triple jump, all those stuff. And running track definitely it helps in like I'd say, you know, obviously form, being in shape is a big thing too. But when it comes down to just sprinting, just like the sprint mechanics and just like having that top end speed to able to break away from somebody. Um, the way I see it, and some people may agree, some people may disagree, but you run differently for football than you do for track. Mm. Uh, I do. And so um, football, you know, I feel like I may be a little bit quicker, but when it comes to that top end speed and, and speed mechanics and sprint mechanics, I feel like track definitely helps improve those and helps you be more efficient when it mm. comes to that. Definitely. Well, do you think you're going to possibly look into doing track while you're, while you're in college? It would definitely take, uh, <laughs> if the opportunity presents itself, I would not turn it down. No. There, there you have it. Right, You're possibly yeah. on track here. That's, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> you might do it. You might do it. But, uh, you know, with your, with your play style as a receiver, like I mentioned, you're pretty speedy. You're pretty fast. So you can get off the line fast. But, you know, what do you think your best trade is as a receiver? That's a real good question. I'd say my best trade is I'm not afraid to get physical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like some, some guys, the way I may see it, they may be a little bit afraid to get physical, but I feel like I'm not, you know, afraid to get physical. Um, I obviously don't like it when DBs try and get their hands on me. That's it's one of the things that I hate the most, but obviously you hand fight for that. So yeah. I feel like not being afraid to get physical, um, you know, using your body, um, using it to try and control where the DB is going or fake them out or whatever. So I, I'd say not, not being afraid to get physical. Definitely. Well, I mean, obviously this is a little bit different running a route compared to blocking, but when I yeah. watch at least your huddle and watch a little bit of your film, I noticed that you're not afraid to put your hand in the dirt and block someone all the way down the field. So that's like, that is something impressive to see from a receiver because you know, most sometimes, you know, receivers get the, get the, like, they get classed into being guys that don't want to get physical, don't want to block. So I thought that was like, you know, really interesting that you're willing to do all that you can. Well, yeah. Cause I mean, obviously being unselfish and it is, you know, another job of the receiver is to block as well, but it just, I mean, why not? I mean, it's, it's just having fun during football and blocking is, is something that I find fun, um, especially downfield blocking and, making plays and even when you're away from where the play's going it's still fun to you know block put somebody in the dirt and also the other thing is too like if I'm running the ball I'm gonna want somebody blocking so you know why not return the favor yeah, definitely definitely I mean hey it is football you want to get a little physical with it I mean play defense too like you know how to tackle like you can, you can do it all you can do it all um but something I thought was a little bit interesting you know going back to so you transition from one high school to another how do you think having something like that, having a transition between two teams will now help you at the next level of transitioning from high school to college from one team to another. It's definitely going to help me with things that I have to focus on and things that I may not have to worry about or focus on, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's also going to let me know and remind me like, you know, the playbook, getting in shape, like all those things that are different. Like obviously – any step to a next level is going to be different because that, you know, high school to high school, that's like, okay. But high school to college, that's definitely going to be um, a different step. So it'll just help me, you know, remember the things that helped me transition from one high school to high school. They'll just help me remember like, okay, you know, this is what you may need to focus on. This may not need to be uh, a focus at this time. And also just, it helped me with my work ethic. And I feel like my work, work ethic will only get better um, once I get to college. Yeah, definitely. And so I could be mistaken here, but I watched a video. It looks like he played at the Vikings football stadium. Is that, did that happen ever? Yeah. yeah. What was that like for you? What was it like playing in the NFL stadium? Yeah, so that was, when was that? That was sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Man, that was two years ago. So you really are doing your research, but that was, <laughs> that was two years ago. Um, it was great. It was really good. I mean, it gave me a taste for what 
obviously, you know, playing football for me, the, the end goal is to be in the NFL and have a good career in the NFL. But it was, it was great, you know, seeing how the field was built, you know, how the, like the hashes were in and how much wider the field was and then like the stadium and, and just the turf itself. Um, it was a lot different than what we played on. So it was, it was definitely good. We didn't win that game. So I don't think I had too many good memories about that specific game, but it was, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, eye opening. And, and fun as well. It was just a great experience. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, hey, you played in an NFL stadium. That's pretty cool. Like, regardless yeah. of maybe even, yeah, you want to win. But that's still pretty yeah. cool to be a part <laughs> of. Uh, but, like, why did you guys play there? Was it just for a regular game? Was it for, like, state championship? Like, what was, like, the – So, it? the Minnesota Vikings would have this thing where they would have uh, – I think it was their training camp um, main field that, pe- that they would scrimmage on, I'm pretty sure. Um, they would have high school people play, teams come and play um, on that field every once in a while. So we actually got to be, I think it was like one of the first or one of the first five or something teams to go over there and play. Um, and we're playing against a section rival. Um, so we, I think we did, we didn't get steamrolled, but we definitely got beat. But um, it was it was an important game. If we beat them, I think we would have got a better placement going into the playoffs, but it wasn't a championship or playoff game or something like that. Oh, that's cool. I mean, hey, and if you, and if you did get steamrolled, like, you're not going to admit that. You're not going <laughs> to be blown out. Like, come on. Yeah, no, that's true. We got we to gotta keep quiet about that. Yeah, come on. You, like, I, don't want, I wouldn't want to admit if I lost by you know, 50 <laughs> points or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, come, come to Clemson, you know, you have a – in your recruiting class – uh, you have a lot of talented guys, and there's a lot of other talented, like, PWOs. I talked to Mason Johnstone, who's from Greenville. He's committed there. But have you had the chance to talk to anyone in your recruiting class? Yeah, I actually have. Um, you know, Mason Johnston, um, uh, me and him, pretty good friends. You know, he was probably the first other commit that really talked to me and, and got to know me. Um, there's definitely – uh, a number of other guys as well uh, that are coming in as, P- as, as PWOs and we communicate pretty regularly. Um, you know, I think I saw a couple of them on my visit that were just there hanging out at the Sweeney house. So it was cool, you know, getting to see them again. Um, and uh, yeah, we definitely, we definitely have a, have a good group of, of friends so far that mm-hmm. communicate pretty regularly. Definitely. You know, that's good to hear right there. And hey, there's nothing better than just hanging out, hanging out with the coach at his place. You know, that's pretty, that's pretty cool right there. But, uh, you know, what's your, like, I guess your personal goals and like maybe even the team goals, but like, what do you, what do you hope to accomplish while you're at Clemson for, you know, the next three, four years, however long you're going to be there for? Yeah. So um, I really look to accomplish, I'd say this is a weird goal, but just trying to get as close to my potential as possible and getting better like every single day you know um daily goal is like staying after practice uh, getting in as much work as possible whether that's um, on the jugs machine or with the quarterback um you know starting goals I, I don't really have that set yet but um my plan as far as going in freshman years is being one of the hardest workers if not the hardest workers um on the team so that's definitely some huge and some big to um, attain but it's not impossible and that's exactly how it was coming to Clemson and getting noticed it was huge and it was hard to attain but it wasn't impossible and I did that so I feel like I won't have um, uh, too much of a problem or too much of a how do I say this of a restriction when it comes to uh, working as hard as I can. Definitely. Well, you know, I feel like this whole entire interview, you, you keep talking about your work ethic, how you're willing to put in the extra hours, put in the extra time, because you want to be able to be the best you can be, but also help the team be the best it can be. Definitely. But like, how, how is this like instilled with you? Like, I mean, obviously, you know, to be the best, you, you need to work hard, but that's still, that's like, not, that's not something easy that you can just go out there. You can take a day off, day, two days off, two days to off, turn into a week. But like, how are you able to have this, like, this hard work, this work ethic instilled to you? Um. 
I think it got instilled in me at a young age. Um, I just seen my mom, you know, she was a very hard worker. Um, and she had many times, you know, work nights just to have um, us be able to have the opportunity to play football, afford cleats, afford equipment, afford food, afford clothes. I mean, it was, it was definitely tough seeing my mom, you know, work many hours during the night. Sometimes she would work 12 hours, come back, take a nap, go back and do it again, just so that we could be able to um, have a better future than she did. So um, I think it's my mom, you know, doing that. And obviously my dad um, being an extremely hard worker, um, just just coming here to the States. So uh, my parents, I'd have to say, definitely put that um, attitude of not really being complacent and just having to do whatever I could to get better um, in me. And obviously it wasn't really there at a young age. It took me a while to understand that this is exactly what's gonna make me be the best that I can be. But once I got it and once I understood that hard work is where it's at and you couldn't cut corners, you can cheat anything, um, then uh, it clicked and, and I've been addicted to it ever since. Definitely, well, that's, that's incredible to hear. That's obviously amazing to have that work ethic and be able to see that firsthand from your parents. Um, but, you know, Michael, you know, do you have any final, any final things you want to say before we uh, wrap up this interview? No, man. I mean, I appreciate you getting on the, on the phone and putting a Zoom call out there and, and having me on the talk. I know you probably got stuff to do, but it's, it's very humbling. I appreciate you taking your time to interview me, me and, uh, and, and get questions out of me and answers out of me that you, you maybe wouldn't have known if you didn't do the Zoom call. So I appreciate that. Definitely. Well, Thank you for coming on, Michael. And this was Michael Minkaka, a uh, PWO commit for Clemson. I appreciate you coming on. Appreciate that. Appreciate that.